Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to the new approach to our Bible study at Bagada headquarters in Jesus' name. The Lord appreciates your coming and your commitment to the Word of God. And even though the notice came to you, maybe by surprise or it was shocking, but it's a good shock. It's wonderful to be at the headquarters, Bagada. If you agree with me, say Amen. Yeah. And the Lord who has brought you will do good in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we bless your name for our Bible study. Thank you for your faithful people, believers, children of God. Thank you for invitees as well. Thank you for all those who are listening everywhere. We're asking, Lord, that tonight you reach our hearts, our soul, our mind, our lives with your word in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, not to allow familiarity with your word to make us despise anything in your word in Jesus' name. As you reveal to us the truth of the word, we pray that it will take root in every life in Jesus' name. Bless every one of us. Prepare us, Lord, for the life we have to live in the future so that the power of your resurrection will always work in every one of our lives. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Tonight we're coming to study from John chapter 20. I was studying from verse 24 all through to verse 31. John chapter 20, reading from verse 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his signs the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. After eight days again, his disciples were with him, and Thomas was them. Then came Jesus, then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach thither thy finger. And behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God, Jesus says unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. I pray the Lord will bless us in his word tonight in Jesus' name. Here we're seeing once again the revelation 
and the appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ after he rose from the dead. He had appeared to the disciples earlier. He appeared to Mary. He appeared to Simon. He appeared to John. He appeared to those disciples, two of them, on the way to Emmaus. He had appeared to the ten, that is, the eleven, minus Judas, who had died, minus Thomas. Thomas was not in the meeting when Christ appeared, when he showed himself unto them, and actually showed them his hands, and he showed them his speech. When Thomas came back, they told him, We've seen the Lord. He's risen, and we've seen him. And he rejected the testimony. He refused the testimony. He despised the testimony. He looked away from the testimony of those ten disciples. And he said, I must see for myself and I will see him not just to recognize him by facial appearance I'll have to put my finger in the print of the nail of his hand not only that I'll have to thrust my hand into the side of Jesus and know that this is Jesus risen from the dead not somebody like him eventually as i've read to you christ came and he knew his thoughts he knew what he had said even though it was not there that's why jesus is lord that's why jesus is god and he said thomas come here put your finger in the nail of my in the nail of my hand the print of the nail and thrust your hand as you said you wanted to do and he knew that Christ was real in his resurrection and he worshipped him and he fell on his face and said my God my Lord Jesus said now that you have seen you're following the principle of the world seeing is believing because you have seen that's why you are not professing to believe blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have believed that's why you are blessed that's why i'm blessed we have not seen him in the physical and yet we believe and i pray that the benefit the profit the favor the grace the blessing of believing will be yours in Jesus' name. Tonight we're looking at this passage under the subject, Believing the Report of Christ's Resurrection. Believing the Report of Christ's Resurrection. Come back to verse 24. In verse 24, it says, but Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. He missed out because he was absent. Christ had come. Christ had appeared. Christ had revealed himself to his own disciples. And to all of them, actually I told them, meet me in Galilee after my resurrection but he missed out on what Christ had done that's why we're told this scripture in Hebrews chapter 10 Hebrews chapter 10 reading from verse 25 Hebrews 10 verse 25 not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much the more as she see the day approaching here he tells the word of god tells us 
by spirit that we should not do like Thomas and forsake the assembling of ourselves together. The disciples were together, but Thomas was not there. And that's why when he came back to the meeting and he told him, We have seen the Lord, he said, I've seen myself. Where well, he has come, and you missed out something. What did he miss out? He missed out the experience of seeing the Lord after he rose from the dead. He missed out the evidence of that resurrection. He missed out the impartation of the Lord Jesus Christ when he spoke to his own disciples, Peace be unto you. He missed out the endowment when Christ said, Receive ye the Spirit. He missed out the extraordinary presence of the risen Christ in the midst of those disciples. Come back to John chapter 20 verse 19. John chapter 20. Reading from verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, when the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. That's the presence of Christ that Thomas missed. He had come, this verse 19 comes before verse 24. He was not in this meeting. He missed the impartation of the peace of God coming into their hearts afresh after the confusion, after the frustration, after their depression, after their problems of not seeing Christ when he had died. And then they were locked behind closed doors. And when he had so said, he showed them, he showed unto them his sons and his side. If Thomas had been there, he would have seen that. All he was now seeing, I must thrust my finger, I must put my finger in the print of the nail. I must thrust my hand on his side. The other disciples already saw because they were not missing in the fellowship. I pray you'll not be missing. You see, there are people that act like Thomas. In fact, in Hebrews chapter 10, where we have read, it says, As the manner of some is. There are people that always miss maybe Bible study. And they say it's not for them. Other people miss the Thursday revival hour. Other people even miss the combined Sunday service that is for every one of us to come together. Other people miss the retreats. Or they say it's retreat time. That will be the time for them to go on vacation and to go to their villages. Like Thomas, they miss a great impartation. You will not miss out. It says, then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them, again, peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Thomas missed that pronouncement, that declaration, that exposition of the great commission. That the same commission the Father had given him, he had given also unto them. Then he goes on to say in verse 22, And when he had said this, he breathed on them and says unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Thomas missed that. I pray you'll not miss it. Whosoever sins, ye remit, they remitted unto them. And whosoever sins, ye retain, they retained. Thomas missed that. It was not after that he came in verse 24. 
But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. I pray you'll be there. You'll not miss out. The blessings of God will not elude you. Everything the Lord wants you to have, you will have in Jesus' name. Believing the report of Christ's resurrection. Three things we're looking at as we consider the passage. Number one, the inexcusable faithlessness in Christ's resurrection. Faithlessness, inexcusable. Unbelief, inexcusable. Doubting the resurrection, inexcusable. Wanting to see, see something. Put my finger there, thrust my hand there in his side. A kind of attitude, unbelief, faithlessness is inexcusable. The inexcusable faithlessness in Christ's resurrection. Number two, our indispensable faith in Christ's resurrection. The kind of faith he wants us to have. Not something that is watching. I must see this before I believe. That's like acting like the world. That's the principle of the world. That's the idea of the world. Seeing is believing. And Jesus said, Thomas, now you say you believe. And you call me Lord. You call me God. Yes, that's right. But you're coming too late. You're confessing that too late. You started with unnecessary doubt and unbelief. And now that you see what you wanted to see, you now say, my Lord, my God, blessed are those who have not seen in the physical, and yet they have believed our indispensable faith in Christ's resurrection. And our point number three, our inexhaustible fullness. What do we have? What do we receive? What do we possess? What comes into our lives? And what comes into our spirit? What possession, what heritage do we have as a result of Christ's resurrection? Our inexhaustible fullness through Christ's resurrection. Number one. Tell me number one somebody there. You can do better than that. The inexcusable faithlessness in Christ's resurrection. We're coming back to John chapter 20. And I'm reading from verse 24 here. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus was not with them when Jesus came the other disciples therefore said unto him we have seen the Lord but he said unto them except I shall see in his signs the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side I will not believe and after eight days again his disciples were within and Thomas was there then came Jesus the doors be shut and stood in the midst and said somebody there peace be unto you the peace will be unto you and then says he to Thomas reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless be not faithless be not unbelieving be not a doubter be not faithless but believing now the unbelief of thomas 
was it justified the unbelief of thomas is there any way to excuse that the answer is no matthew chapter 28 in matthew chapter 28 reading from verse 5 matthew 28 verse 5 and the angel answered and said unto the woman fear not ye for i know that you see jesus which was crucified he is not here for he is risen as he said come see the place where the lord lay the resurrection of jesus was affirmed and attested to by the angel and the angel told the woman that went to the sepulchre and said he's not here he's risen the power of god from on high had rolled away the stone and now christ is risen come and see and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead the angel told the woman and said go tell his disciples christ is risen from the dead and behold he goes before you into galilee tell those disciples all of them don't allow they shouldn't allow themselves to be scattered here and there everyone galilee is the place wait for him there he will reveal himself unto you and there shall you see him i have told you and he departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy and he drawn to bring his disciples word look at verse 9 it says and as they went to tell his disciples behold jesus met them jesus will meet you saying all hail and they came and held him by his feet and worshipped him then said jesus unto them look at this be not afraid go tell my brethren that they go into galilee and there shall they see me thomas had no excuse the women said that angel revealed to us christ is risen and we saw the empty tomb and he said go tell all my disciples meet me in galilee and then jesus met with those women and said it is i and they recognized him and he fell at his feet and he said now go and tell my disciples they meet me in galilee and those women came and they told all the disciples and eve thomas had listened to what they said he will not have missed out i pray you listen to the word you will not miss out it will not be like you are hearing but you are not hearing you will hear you will be in jesus name Luke chapter 24 reading from verse 25 then he said unto them O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken ought not christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory and beginning at moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself he was talking now to those uh, believers on the way to Emmaus. Look at verse 30. In verse 30, and it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, like your eyes will be opened. And they knew him and he vanished out of their sight and they said one to another did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures look at this verse 33 and they rose up the same hour and returned to jerusalem and found 
the eleven gathered together and them that are with them saying the lord is risen indeed and has appeared unto simon thomas had no excuse these believers came from children from uh, emails and they said the lord is risen indeed and he has appeared unto simon Let's go on to verse 35. And he told what things they were, that were done in the way, and how he was known of them in breaking a bread. And as they thus speak, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and says unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted. And supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? Why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit has not flesh and bones, as you see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. You see that? Evident, evidently, Christ convinced them. And he said, it is I. I'm not a ghost. I'm not a spirit. It is Jesus, your Lord. It is Jesus, your Redeemer. And Jesus gave them the indisputable evidence, the assurance that he had risen from the dead. But apart from all this, why would we say that Thomas had no excuse? Come to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 21, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples, Thomas included, how that he must go on to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chippies and the scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. He had taught them. He had revealed to them. He had made the proclamation before them was going to be killed on the third day he will rise again that's enough even if thomas had not seen even if the other disciples had not seen uh, the declaration of christ the pronouncement of christ the very fact that christ has said it and he knew that he was the way the truth and the life whatever he said was always true he should have believed his faithlessness was inexcusable we're coming to matthew chapter 17 verses 22 and 23 matthew chapter 17 verse 22 and while they abode in galilee jesus said unto them this was before the crucifixion this was before they killed him he had told them, this is what will happen. The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men. And they shall kill him. And the third day he shall rise, he shall be raised again. The third day he shall be raised again. Look at what follows. And they were exceeding sorry. Why? They were thinking of being killed. They were not thinking of resurrection. They were exceedingly sorry. Why? They focused on his absence. They didn't focus on his resurrection. That's why they were sorry. But the point is, he told them. He told them, and they should have remembered Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words shall not pass away. Heaven and earth, the sky, the sun, the moon, 
everything we see there everything we don't see everything will vanish away but the words of christ will not pass away the words of christ are sure and since he revealed to them he was going to die he was going to be betrayed and slain and that happened and then he said i will rise again that should have been enough for a real disciple if he continue in my word then are ye my disciples in the first corinthians chapter 15. in first corinthians chapter 15 reading from verse 5 first corinthians chapter 15 from verse 5 and that he was seen of savers that's peter then of the twelve after that he was seen of above 500 brethren at once jesus rose again and it wasn't a secret resurrection it was not something that other people did not know only these few scattered people knew no about 500 at once saw him it says of whom the greater part remain unto this present but some are falling asleep after that he was seen of james then of all the apostles and last of all it was seen of me also as of one born out of due time thomas had no excuse he said except i see except i put my finger in the print of the nail and except i thrust my hand into his side i will not believe what if jesus did not favor him what if Jesus did not have mercy on him? What if Jesus did not have compassion on him to come back and say, Thomas, you can see me now. I'm risen from the dead. What if he remained in that unbelief of the resurrection of Christ? Look at verse 17 of that first Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 17. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain ye are yet in your sins he couldn't have a final salvation full salvation and the grace of god in salvation if he had remained in that unbelief concerning the resurrection of christ verse 18 then they also which are fallen asleep in christ are perished and if uh, Thomas had died without believing that Jesus rose from the dead, he would have perished. Verse 19, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that sleep. Believing in the resurrection is very important. Unbelief, inexcusable. Faithlessness, inexcusable. John chapter 5, verse 38. John chapter 5, verse 38. And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he has sent, him ye believe not. That was the problem of Thomas. He didn't have the words of Christ abiding in him. That I'll die for the sins of the whole world, and then I will rise again. Chapter 8, verse 24. John chapter 8, verse 24. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins for if ye believe not that i am he ye shall die in your sins it would be unfortunate for thomas if he remained in that state of mind set of unbelief in the resurrection of christ because if he did not believe he would have died in his sins there are many people today 
that do not believe in the resurrection of Christ is to their loss, is to their perdition. Because we're told in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Those who do not believe in this important evidence, experience of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the God of this world has blinded their minds, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God shall shine in their hearts. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 11. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 11. It is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, what will happen? If we deny him, say it aloud, he also will deny us. You will not deny the Lord. You will not deny the resurrection of the Lord. You will not be faithless. You believe in Jesus' name. In verse uh, 13, if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in the parting from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Verse 18, and to whom swear he that ye should they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not. If Thomas had remained in that condition, I don't believe, I don't accept, I will not believe, except I put my finger in the print of the nails. Except I thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe if the Lord Jesus had not been compassionate and, and uh, favoring him to say, Look at me, look at the print of the nails who are asking for, and look at my feet, and look at the side. If Jesus had not been merciful unto him and he had remained in that unbelief, after all the others have testified and told him, he would not have got to heaven. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. You will enter in. I will enter in. We shall enter in in Jesus' name. Point number two. Our indispensable faith in Christ's resurrection. We're coming to John chapter 20 and i'm reading from verse 28 and verse 29 and thomas answered and said unto him my lord and my god jesus says unto him thomas because thou hast seen me thou hast believed blessed are they who have not seen but have believed. Eventually, he was convinced. And then he declared his faith, what he believed. And he went beyond the ordinary faith of even all the other people. 
he went back to the old testament you are lord you are god not only you are lord and you are god you are my lord and you are my god how could you say that how could you call jesus lord how could you call jesus god isaiah chapter 9 reading from verse 6 isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 born to us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god he believed this eventually he said you are not just man and you are not ordinary and you're not of just of the descendants of adam and eve you are god very god the son of god mighty god everlasting father the prince of peace he called him not only god he called him lord jeremiah chapter 23 jeremiah chapter 23 reading from verse 5 behold the days come says the lord and you see the lord there capital l capital o capital r capital d the lord that i will raise unto david a righteous branch and a king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth in his days shall be israel judah shall be saved and israel shall dwell safely and this is his name whereby he shall be called tell me the lord our righteousness that's what thomas came to eventually when the lord showed him the evidence i am christ yes i died and yes i was buried on the third day i rose as i declared unto you here is the evidence and when he was convinced of that evidence and he believed from the depths of his heart that jesus had risen from the dead he said you are my lord you are my god he now believed the prophecies that have been written concerning christ the lord and the express image of god among men malachi chapter 3 in malachi chapter 3 reading from verse 1 malachi chapter 3 verse 1 behold i will send my messenger this is the ancient of this talking this god the father talking this god almighty himself talking behold i will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me and the lord you see the spelling there capital l o r d and then it says whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in behold he shall come says who you see that lord capital l capital o capital r capital d that's okay about god the father the father is saying jesus is also lord and is the messenger of the covenant that's what um, this man thomas eventually came to and he said you are my lord you are my god matthew chapter one matthew chapter one reading from verse 20 in matthew chapter one verse 20 here we find the angel appearing to joseph and see what he calls jesus chapter 1 verse 20 of matthew but while he thought on these things behold the angel of the lord appeared unto him in a dream saying joseph thou son of david fear not to take unto thee mary thy wife 
For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name. Somebody shout that name. Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying. Look at this. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth his son. And they shall call his name. Tell me the name. Emmanuel, which being interpreted is, everybody, God with us. That's why eventually when Thomas was convicted and convinced, he confirmed Jesus as his Lord, Jesus as his God. First Timothy chapter, one, chapter 3. First Timothy chapter 3. Reading from verse 16, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Look at this. God was manifest in the flesh. That's talking about Jesus. He came, born in a manger, and he referred to himself quite a lot of times. The Son of Man. And this is God coming to us in the form of a man. And he did everything as if he was really human. He was hungry. He was thirsty. He was tired. He slept in the boat. And everything every human being does, he did without sinning without sinning but don't limit god to just his humanity he is god that's why it says without controversy without argument and without any shadow of doubt god was manifest in the flesh justified in the spirit seen of angels preached unto the gentiles believed on in the world and received up into glory we're coming back to john chapter 20 we're seeing the confession we're seeing the confirmation we're seeing the conviction of thomas my lord and my god now john chapter 20 verse 29 Jesus says unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they which have not seen and yet have believed. As you think about the definition and description of faith, real faith, true faith is believing before you see believing before you see let's come to hebrews this is real faith you cannot say now i believe after you have seen after you have tasted after you have faced you've got it now i believe you believe before you see and i pray that this pure faith pure faith in christ in the resurrection of christ in the promises of Christ, in the power of Christ, the Lord will make available to every one of us in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Now faith is a substance hoped for the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. We have not seen it, but we have heard the word. We have not seen it. We have read it in the Word. And because we have heard it, because we have seen it in the Word of God, we say, yes, I believe. And what we believe will then become evident in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 27. 
verse 27 by faith he forsook egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured a seen him who is invisible that's the faith he endured by faith a seen him who is invisible not visible to the naked eye and yet believing that's the real faith we're coming to romans chapter 4 romans chapter 4 reading from verse 18 go against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be and being not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about an hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb he could see that he could see his own age his own body he could feel the condition he had in the body and he could see the condition of Sarah but he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to God not because of what he saw but what he had not seen every promise of God you have not seen your believing will be fulfilled in Jesus name don't wait for sight don't walk by sight don't change your mind on the promises of God because of what you see to the contrary it says I'm being fully persuaded you'll be fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness now it was not reaching for his sake alone but it was imputed to him that it was imputed unto him but for us also as abraham believed what he did not see he confessed what he did not see he confirmed what he did not see he stood firmly on it says as the lord fulfilled that promise for him he'll fulfill it for you too for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead if we believe the resurrection that was raised from the dead he said then the righteousness of the Lord will be conferred and imputed unto us who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification second corinthians chapter 4 verse 18 second corinthians chapter 4 verse 18 while we look not at the things which are seen like thomas asking to see the hand asking to see the feet asking to put his finger in the print of the nails asking to thrust his hand into the side of christ before he will believe he says no we don't that's not faith that's not faith but he says why well, we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal chapter 5 verse 7 second corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 for we walk by faith and not by sight you cannot do both together simultaneously walking by sight walking by faith you walk by faith then you'll not walk by sight you're walking by sight then you're not walking by faith but it says we're not looking at things that are visible we're looking at things that are invisible and we're looking at the promises of god that cannot fail 
we're looking at the words of Jesus Christ that will not pass away even though heaven and earth may pass away walking by faith you'll walk by faith you lay by faith and faith will work in every one of our lives in Jesus name did I hear an amen over there Galatians chapter 2 reading from verse 20 Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ liveth in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the face of the Son of God the life which I now live from day to day challenges come I live by faith temptations come I overcome by faith trials come I subdue and walk on that trial on those trials all by faith because now I live by the faith of the Son of God and no river will drown you and no fire will burn you and no poverty will destroy you and no joblessness will overtake your life or you will live by the promise of God and as you live by the promise of God it will be yes and amen upon your life every time in Jesus name and you will not be waiting until you see the answer to the prayer you see the answer to the promise you see the solution to the problem you'll not be waiting I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me you will live by faith your life will be blessed every time as you live by faith in Jesus name we're coming back to John chapter 20 John chapter 20 and we're reading from verse 30 and verse 31 John chapter 20 verses 30 and 31 and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book is talking about the signs what he showed them after his resurrection this chapter is a chapter on the resurrection of Jesus Christ that when he rose from the dead he appeared unto them he revealed himself unto them and he showed them signs that made them to know that in truth Christ has risen from the dead and his son John is saying these are reaching in verse 31 but these are reaching that she might believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that believing ye might have life through his name the reason we're studying all this that Jesus Christ rose from the dead and that it is indisputable it is unarguable it is it's undoubtable you cannot doubt it that Jesus rose from the dead the reason why we're studying that is to see what we have as a result of that resurrection look at that verse 31 but these are reaching that she might believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God and that believing as you believe in that resurrection ye might have life fullness of life through his name point number three our inexhaustible fullness through Christ's resurrection what do we have as a result of the resurrection of Jesus Christ number one we have salvation as we believe that resurrection look at Romans chapter 10 Romans chapter 10 reading from verse 9 Romans chapter 10 verse 9 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved if you don't believe that Christ was raised from the dead you cannot be saved 
you may repent you may weep you may shed tears you may turn over a new leaf you may try to brush up your life yourself you might try to live a clean life in your own effort in your own strength if you don't believe that jesus died for you and rose again from the dead you cannot be saved that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and shall believe in thine heart that god has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation not only that we believe in the resurrection and then we move on to sanctification we're looking in at hebrews chapter 13 hebrews chapter 13 verse 20 now the god of peace that brought again from the dead resurrection the god of peace that brought he came from the dead and lord jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will walking in you as you believe the resurrection that god brought him from the dead he walks in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen first peter chapter one verse 21 first peter chapter one verse 21 who by him do believe in god that raised him up from the dead you see that you have to believe the resurrection you believe in god who raised christ from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in god seen he have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto the unfeigned love of the brethren see that she love one another with a pure heart fervently sanctification also is received as we believe that is not just i'm trying to copy the life of jesus i'm trying to live like jesus talk like jesus drag like jesus pray like jesus it's not just copying him or to be like thee but it is the faith we have in the resurrection of jesus christ he shed his blood for me he died he rose again so that i can be sanctified do you know that we receive the power of the holy ghost as we recognize the death the burial the resurrection of christ acts of the apostles chapter 2 acts chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 33 acts chapter 2 we're reading from verse why don't you back up to verse 32 verse 32 this jesus as god raised up whereof we're all witnesses it says resurrection of jesus is true we're witnesses it's clear we're convinced we saw him he, he rose from the dead look at this therefore what's the therefore for back to verse 32 this jesus has got raised up whereof we all are witnesses therefore being by the right hand of god exalted and having received of the father the promise of the holy ghost he has shed forth this which he now see and hear we have received the promise of the spirit the baptism in the holy ghost because christ was raised from the dead and then is ascended up to heaven and as you believe that you look at verse 39 for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call we we'll receive healing 
as we believe that Jesus Christ died, he died for us, he was raised from the dead. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, verse 15. And killed the prince of life, whom God has raised from the dead, whom God has raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses, and his name, through faith in his name, the name of the risen Christ, has made this man stronger, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. That means then, as we believe in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, that risen Lord then manifests power and he heals us. You are healed. Amen. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, you see that? The spirit of the Holy Ghost that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. We believe in the resurrection. And because we believe in that resurrection, then it tells us it will quicken our mortal body. He will do it. In your life, he will do it. Second Corinthians chapter 5, reading from verse 14. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we are all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Our new life in Christ, our new life as new creatures in Christ, depends so much on the resurrection of Jesus. Verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature, old things are passed away, and behold, in your life, in our church, all things have become new. Can you see how everything is tied to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ? Come to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 5 and verse 6. Even when we were dead in sins, he has quickened us together with Christ. Christ rose from the dead. We believe in Christ now. And we're quickened with Christ. By grace are you saved. Look at verse 6. And has raised us up together. You have to believe in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before you identified with him. And you're seated with him on the throne. He has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That benefit is ours because of the resurrection of Christ. Philippians chapter 3. We're reading from verse 10. Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. You believe in the resurrection and then you can now have the same power that raised him from the dead that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Colossians chapter 3. In Colossians chapter 3, as we believe in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
he gives us the fullness of blessing the fullness of benefits it tells us in chapter 3 verse 1 colossians if ye then be risen with christ christ is risen you are identified with him in that resurrection if ye then be risen with christ seek those things which are above where christ sits on the right hand of god set your affections on things above not on things on the earth for ye are dead and your life is seed with christ in god your life is protected your life is preserved and you are hid with christ in god on the basis of the resurrection of jesus christ and when christ who is our life shall appear then shall ye also appear with him in glory any amen on my side there first thessalonians chapter 4 in first thessalonians chapter 4 it says in verse 14 first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 14 for if we believe that jesus died and rose again if you believe in the resurrection of jesus if we believe that jesus died and rose again even so them also which sleep in jesus will god bring with him for this will say unto you by the word of the lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the lord shall not prevent precede them which are asleep for the lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of god and the dead in christ shall rise first and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds and so shall to meet the lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the lord let the church say amen a person who does not believe in the resurrection of jesus cannot partake in the rapture christ is coming and is coming for the glorious church and those who do not believe in their heart that jesus rose from the dead they cannot partake in the rapture it's very clear in that passage to get to heaven you go through the way of the cross christ died for you he was buried on the third day he rose again and then that resurrection grants us justification grants us redemption grants us forgiveness grants us sanctification grants us holy ghost baptism grants us healing grants us deliverance grants us a righteous life grants us the being partakers of the rapture grants us heaven at last are you there heaven at last are you going there heaven at last thank god you'll be there thank god we shall be there in jesus name we believe in jesus i believe in jesus in, in his virgin birth in his holy life in his miracles in his words in his pronouncements in his prophecy in his coming again in his rising from the dead and because we believe look at what happens look at what is reserved preserved unto us first peter chapter one first peter chapter one verse three blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope according to his mercy abundant mercy he has begotten us again unto a lively hope by somebody there tell me 
by say it aloud if you believe in the resurrection by by the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible it is through that inheritance or it is through that resurrection of christ we have this inheritance incorruptible undefiled that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you reserved in heaven personal for me reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of god through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time the lord has shown us today the glory of believing in the resurrection of the lord jesus christ first peter chapter 8 chapter 1 verse 8 first peter chapter 1 verse 8 whom have been not seen ye love we're not waiting until we see the print of the nails in the hand we're not waiting until we can see the hole that was made on his side by the spear we have not seen yet we have believed and we are more blessed than thomas we're more blessed than those who are waiting for a physical evidence because it says whom have you not seen ye love in whom do ye now see him not do ye now see him not yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory you will rejoice now in this life joy your name in heaven joy your prayers answered joy sanctification in your heart joy holy ghost power in your life joy and the power to keep on living victoriously you'll be joyful your joy will be full in jesus name and then when the lord shall come in the rapture and the dead in christ shall rise and those of us who are alive shall be caught up together with them joy in your life in jesus name and your joy will be full even from today even from tonight i say lord and you kind of verbalize your faith again put your faith towards and say lord i believe in the resurrection of jesus and then after that as for any other blessings yours will be the blessing today in jesus name join your heart join your soul join your spirit join your place of work join your family joy 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 all the way to heaven in jesus name and when those pearly gates open for you and it says go marching in and then the lord stands before you saying come in i've been waiting for you and you get to heaven great will be your joy unlimited infinite in jesus name because although you've not seen in the physical yet you have believed he rose from the dead all blessings are yours in jesus name let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer rejoice 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 because he rose again he rose again he rose again and now you believe that jesus rose from the dead because of that forgiveness is yours because of that freedom is yours because of that salvation is yours because of that holiness of heart purity of heart sanctification is yours because of that the power of the holy ghost is available for you because of that the power to live victoriously belongs to you because of that joy unspeakable available for you i believe in the resurrection of christ on the basis of that everything i ask in prayer you will give 